Hello, can you hear? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hey, Nassim. Good to meet you. I'm Rafi. Hey, hey very nice Rafi. to meet you, Rafi. Shira. Hey, how you guys doing? Baruch Hashem. Yom Yom, as they say. Yom Yom, right? Yom Yom. Baruch Hashem. Chazdei Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Shira, do you want to start off? Yeah, so I'm starstruck. Sorry if I start blabbering. Um, thank you so much for joining. Um, my name is Shira, the VP of Socials at OEM Advisors. And we're honored to have you, so we wanted to introduce you. And we chose you because you're such your spotlight for the Jewish nation. And your following is inspiring, your art is inspiring. And so take the stage, introduce yourself. Oh, well, my name is Nisim Black, and... Uh... Baruch Hashem, I'm happy to know that I'm, I'm spotlighted for something. <laughs> uh, Baruch Hashem, I moved to Eretz Yisrael maybe whew, six years ago and uh, loving every bit of it and had no idea, you know, as I was leaving, I was sort of on the verge of my music career even sprouting and uh, I actually moved not knowing what I was going to do. I just wanted to get to Israel and... Uh, I remember being greeted in the airport with my song playing in the airport. It's been wow. a beautiful, beautiful experience uh, being here. I, fortunately, but unfortunately, I have to travel a lot. But uh, the good part about it is that uh, I always know where home is, and I and I'm for sure never jealous of anywhere else because I know where I'm going back home to. So, it's a little that's bit a, about me. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, I just wanted to share with everybody what we do here at the Lim Advisors, just for a brief moment, and then we just have a few questions for you. So. My sister and I actually started Olim Advisors back in 2016 with two goals in mind. One was to encourage people from around the world to make Aliyah. As you said, Nisim, it's an amazing country. It's with secular, religious, doesn't matter. There's something special about Israel, and we really want to encourage people to come here. And then the second thing is to help people because, you know, as we all know, it's challenging. It's a different language. It's a different culture, and people need help. And so we started this organization to do both. And Baruch Hashem, we've helped hundreds of families over the years, and it's just been amazing. You know, uh, some of the things that we do is uh, when people are thinking about making Aliyah, helping them find communities, helping them find schools. You know, there are a lot of important decisions that people have to make, and so we want to help them. And then we know that, you know, when you get here, the challenges don't just end after a month or two. You could be living in Israel for five years, 10 years. And so we have different different services, different ways of helping. You know, we just launched a, a service where we help families with children with special needs, you know, because it's dealing with Bituach Lomi and dealing with the system here is hard. And then we have, we're helping elderly that need help with health care. And so really... We want to help people adjust. And then, you know, there are a lot of people that want to have a home in Israel, whether you're making Aliyah or you're living here, or maybe you just are living around the world and you want to own a home in Israel and you want to be able to call it your home. And so, Bo Hashem, we've been able to help people and we want to keep on helping them. And we feel that it's a, it's a group effort. You know, uh, people on our team, you, um, you know, everybody that really loves Israel wants to help people. And so we thought it would be inspiring to just start interviewing people and asking them questions and so that people can be inspired and learn from other people's experiences. So we just put together a few questions that we'd like to, to ask you. And I guess the first one is, you know, you've gone through a journey in life, right? Um, at what point did you did you think to yourself, wow, uh, you know, I'd love to live in Israel. That's where I belong. That's where my home is. How did that kind of come about? Very good question. You know, as I started, um, uh, I guess I would say restudying the Bible, um, I, I, you know, as I was coming into Judaism, I didn't know where I was going to land. I just knew I, I was trying to land somewhere in God's arms, you know, uh -huh. and, and, I was, and I was reading Tanakh and I was going through it, going through it. And it, I, I almost say that it's almost impossible for a person um, to, to read it from, you know, from, from that standpoint of, of looking at it and viewing it as God's, God's word, uh, to read that and not have some type of excitement to be in Israel, right? Some, some people, it goes as far as like, I want to visit, but like, I was like, no, I have to be in this place where everything happened. So I don't think from the moment that I, you know, really started my journey to Judaism, which, ugh, probably was almost 12, 13 years ago, 12 or 13 years ago, that 
I was like fiending to get to this place. And um, and I think it really, it, what made it worse is I came to visit in 2013. Uh, my wife didn't know that was a pilot trip for me, but that's <laughs> why, that's, I knew it was. And, um, and, and came here and I, I think it was just for me, almost no way for me to really feel like um, I'm really being immersed into, you know, you don't, it's not just the people, it's also the land, it's the, it's, it's everything. So um, it was very, very much so um, a deep um, inner spiritual reason why, why I wanted to move. And so followed through on that. It took a while to get my wife on board, you know, uh, but we ended up uh, getting on the same page, thank God. She moved here sight unseen. She had never wow. been here. And uh, so... And now I can't get her to leave. <laughs> you know, not that I want to leave. I can't take her on a vacation. That she's uh, she everything is like she's. Uh, we, I just don't want to go too far. I took her to America not too long ago. She hadn't been in like, you know, almost six years or so. She said, I, I, "Not for me. Let's hurry up and get back." I and, get I, back. and if we leave, uh-huh. I don't want to leave anywhere too far away. So um, it's amazing. It's a true sense of home. You know, I think that I tell people is because you know, it's challenging. It's challenging moving to Israel, different language. But what I, what I tell people is one of the most amazing things is that you feel like you belong, you know, and then right. whether, again, you're religious, not religious, wherever you live, like there's, there's a connection to the people, there's a connection to the land, there's this extra dimension um, that I really feel, uh, you know, um, it has an impact. You, can't, you cannot come to Israel and not be impacted, I think. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. No matter the background. Absolutely. Uh, when you, when you, so we look at the journey that you made, and then there's the practical side of, of your, of your art, of your, you know, the, the business that you were building with your music. And was there ever a concern that you, you know, here you were in the States, you were building momentum and then you're picking up and you're leaving and starting over. Was that a concern? Like, how did you, how did kind of the, the, the spiritual and the practical, you know, how did you deal with both aspects of it? Cause they're both, you know, important. No, absolutely. So what happened was um, I I really leaned more spiritual because I had no idea what was going to happen. I as things started to bubble, I realized that, you know, that technically, like, like financially, you know, this looks like a very bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a very bad decision. You're going to have to go back and forth. But one of those things was, you know, it's also called the land of Amuna. So I, I just went on faith. I came here. We moved. And I think I was maybe two days after making Aliyah, and I had to sh- I had to shoot a brand new video, and a few weeks, uh, two weeks after that, I was already flying back to the states to do a concert. Now I was flying back so much that within I think I was supposed to get my passport within a year, but within a year's time, I hadn't technically been in Israel long enough, you know. Uh-huh. So I almost took it as like you know, like I said, every time I was going back. It just made me realize how much of a good decision it was that I didn't live <laughs> abroad. That I was able to live in Israel, and I think what we were able to do was, um, you know, I I thought maybe I set up more things here, or whatever. But I was able to sort of figure out a way to stream my income. Like I, you know, I I think a lot of those things are a little bit overthought. Am I? Am mm-hmm. I? It's obviously something that's very very important. People have to deal. With, they have to think about these type of things, but. You know, I almost have that, you know, I have, a, I have a way of looking at things that when you are where you're supposed to be, what's supposed to happen is going to happen. And I think that, you know, one of those, the biggest fear is always people's like, what's going to be with my pronouncer? And I've heard, you know, a lot of people have these different stories, but a lot of people that I've seen encounter a lot of these issues, they were so worried about the pronouncer when they come, they never left that worry. Mm-hmm. Most people that really went for it and said that, you know what, this is my, home. this is the place I'm going to be, they end up figuring it out. And unfortunately, I just learned of a close friend who, you know, was is, is dealing with a, uh, what could be terminal disease. And no, and they sorry. say also to most people who go in with it, with the doomsday, it's over, it's all up. They don't. And I've, I've had plenty of friends over the last year and a half, they've gone through this and they've come out, they've beaten, you know, and, and, and it's a, it's a, it's a mind state. Mm-hmm. If you go in there thinking that, Oh, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's not going to happen. No, 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 no. If you go there saying, I'm going to do it and I'm definite and your heart's in it, then everything else will follow. You know, it's interesting, and I'll share with you just something quickly, a personal story, but a month before, we made Aliyah in 2015, and a month beforehand, our father passed away from cancer, um, oh. and Sorry. when he was battling with it, um, he went to, he was in Sloan Kettering in New York, and you know, the best doctors there, 
And this world-renowned doctor told my dad, he said, Harry, the best thing that you can do is have a positive mindset more than all the drugs and all the treatment. And that's what you're saying. And I think that applies also to, to making Aliyah and living in Israel is that we help so many people and the people that come with that positive mindset. And they say, you know what? There'll be days that will be tough and that's okay. And we'll get through them and it'll get easier and easier. If you have that positive mindset, then things will work out. And I think that's something that you've internalized and it's something that I think both Shira and I can, can relate to as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what are, what were some of the challenges, right? Cause um, you know, you're moving and, and you said your wife, you know, hadn't been here before. And so what are maybe like two of the three challenges, maybe the things that you didn't expect that you got, you're like, wow, I didn't think this was going to happen. And then on the flip side, what were some of the things that inspired you? You know, so if you kind of flash back, what were some of the things that you said, you know what, only in Israel, only in Israel could this happen. <laughs> um, it's very interesting. Um, you know, I don't think there's any amount of warnings um, or any amount of, uh, you know, I, I call them warnings, but any preparation that you could do, no matter how many times you heard it, when you hear the word bureaucracy, like there's no way to prepare for the amount that you will <laughs> you will encounter here. You know, it's very, very tough uh, to navigate through certain things like that, you know. Um, cultural things, you know, even even a lot of things that I thought left me culturally because I had been living, you know, in a Jewish world for so long in the States that there were certain things that I didn't think were still there. But, you know, originally I, I, I come from the hood. I'll be mm -hmm. straight up with you. So, you know, uh, pushing, no people standing in lines, bumping into you, <laughs> not saying sorry, not like that whole mentality for me is like, you know, I come from a different world. Right. What that literally means that you want to fight me. So <laughs> you have to get over the realization that everybody's not trying to fight right. you, um, you know, and, you know, and, and so a lot of those things are very challenging. The school system was very challenging. We found, you know, it could be very much so the Haredi school system. I don't think you have that outside as much. Uh, but the school system was very, very challenging for us. Um, and and I, I think that, you know, we were able to, you know, obviously the language situation, mm -hmm. but, you know, after a while you pick it up. And especially if you come with kids, people always worried about the kids. Like the kids pick it up very fast. So right. they've been translators right. for us for the last six <laughs> years, you know, oh, <laughs> you know? That's awesome. as we're picking it up as we go. But, you know, it, it, it ends up being... Uh, you know, but all these things, you know, like I said, you, you end up moving past them and, and, and most of them turn into like the most funniest moments that you've ever had, you know what I mean, in your life. You know, if I could look back at how many times I got to run around on something and I look back and just like, that was so pathetic. It can't be possible that it's nobody in his job. So everybody's right. nobody. You can't tell me there's nobody in his job. Right. So. I see that you, the the Israel personality is already part of you now. You, yeah. you, you don't take no for an answer, right? That's what they say. They say in Israel, no means maybe, and maybe means yes. Right, definitely. Listen, you know, but it, it what it does is strengthens character more than what people even know. It really strengthens your character over here. Right. So that's and you, you know, you, awesome. you mentioned bureaucracy, and, and that's actually one of the things that we do is that we take people to Misrat Aklita and the Pneum and the bank and all that because for a lot of people Amazing. that's that's daunting. But what I tell people is, you know, the people that we work with are good people. They're competent. They have a bad reputation, but you know, if you go there and you see, you know, they're actually much better than what people give them credit to. And you know, I can't tell you how many managers and individuals have been bend over backwards to help William because they appreciate the sacrifices that people make when they come here. And so just as a kind of a quick message to everyone, you know, you probably heard the horror stories, but it's really, there's a lot more good than the bad. So just for everyone to keep in mind. Um, what about yeah, I think also too, like organizations like yourself, there were some people that also helped me out also, but I think that that's the biggest thing is making sure that when people do move, that they are, do have somebody to lean on and, and to help them along the way, um, because that was so crucial for us. Nav almost navigating every single thing that we've done, we've had to have, you know, some type of help. 
And uh, so that's very, very important. I, I would definitely not say just come, I'm going to do it on my own. Mm-hmm. I'll figure it out. No, you're definitely going to need some help to navigate things, especially at first, at least the first five, six years or so. For sure, for sure. What about like the, the other side of the coin? We talked about some of the challenges, but what about maybe, you know, two or three uh, kind of moments that, you know, that inspired you, that made you realize, wow, I'm, I'm in Israel. You know, can you, are there any kind of uh, flashbacks to any moments that uh, you can think of? <laughs> Yeah, there's like a cultural discovery. I was just talking to somebody else about like, you know, um, as I mentioned, the places that I come from in America, but I think also to in the black community in particular, you know, like you, we have, I'm, it's probably going to sound gory or, or sound bad, but like I grew up like, you know, you see a person uh, fall in the street to drop all the grocery stuff. Like for, for me growing up, that was like, that was a comedy show. We would laugh at those type of things. You know, it was a horrific type of thing over here. It's like, if somebody falls in the amount of people that rush to run Mm -hmm. and help somebody like the, the, the amount of love and the, and, and, and watching even two people escalate and then turn around very, very quickly. And like, (laughs) it's like when you guys just like, it's a certain, like, uh, I don't know, brotherly love here in Israel that uh that usurps everything and everything is coming from the standpoint of where like you know I come from a Seattle uh where I always say everything's very uh passive aggressive over here it's aggressive passive you know you break (laughs) the shells you you break through the shells of people and you just see the most wonderful people and then the sham of people come out very very easily over here after you crack this egg which you think is thicker than what it is and it's nothing so that's one of the most beautiful things i think is just culturally embedded here yeah, amazing. I, I agree with you. I think it's the warmth, you know, it comes from a good place. And even if they tell you, look, you know, Nisim, you shouldn't be buying that cheese in the supermarket because it's got too much fat, but they, they're saying it because, you know, they care about you. And <laughs> right. So I, I, I completely, I completely understand where you're coming from. And then just to, to wrap it up, kind of the last question is just a general, you know, if, you, if there's any words of wisdom or advice that you can share with people. And some of the people we talk to say, look, Rafi, I've been dreaming about, you know, making Aliyah for years and I don't know what I should do or is it for me? You know, what what kind of, what words can you share with people just to give them that uh, inspiration and a little bit of positive encouragement? Well, I think honestly is that this is a place that, you know, where, where everybody belongs, you know, like you have a place here. You should definitely feel that you have a place here, that this is home. And, 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 and honestly, you know, <laughs> if, 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 if you're, if you're of the people for sure, no doubt about it, no matter where you are, this is always home. And I think all of us know that. But it's, it's very few of us who actually get to actualize that. Yeah. So I think that that's one of the biggest things is knowing that, you know, any time you made a decision to, to make Aliyah, that the mindset has to be is that I'm going home. I'm just only I'm only returning home. So I think that's one of the biggest things. And to the other thing is, is to is, is to realize, you know, that most of the time when we, you know, even if you think of a situation where you you you're put in a in a in a very tough compromising situation and maybe you have to go and have a talk that's very very hard for you to have with someone uh, usually things that give us cold feet is the imagination of how things are going to play out and we usually tend to think of the worst we absolutely usually think of things the worst but usually when we finally break through and we have to have the conversation it usually never is as bad as what we thought it was people don't usually take things and i think that that's the way that it is also to with making major decisions in life like moving to Israel it's like a lot of it is is that we have this idea of all oh, this but then if I don't do this I'm gonna do that throw it out throw it out throw it out positivity only being in this place this place is 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 uh has a very beautiful future and ahead of it, the, you know, real estate is great here. This is a beautiful place. Like, I, I can't even imagine how how it could, it could be such a hard decision. I don't know either why it took my wife so long. You know, I was already on board, but it took her a little bit to, to, to stop dreaming, and we finally made it. So I think that's the biggest thing. If I can encourage everybody is just, you know, just to do it, you know, fight through all the, the different bilbulim and different things like that and come and be here in this place and, and, and know that you not only have a place here, but you, you have family, you have brothers here, you have sisters here that uh, are, are waiting for you. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for your time and for your positive message and for your inspiration. You know, we, may you be blessed really to have many more opportunities oh uh, to help people and, and for success. And 
well, together, like I said, we're a family, and so we're here to to help everyone. And uh, you know, um, it's just a, a pleasure, a pleasure meeting you, and and thank you for your time. And please, God, you know, we'll meet again, and we'll we'll be able to do a lot of good for Am Yisrael and for for all the Jews around the world. Oh, so man. thank you. Oh, man. Oh, well, man. Thank, thank you, Shira. So Thanks for organizing. Thank Have a Laila Tov. Have a good night. We'll talk to you good soon. Night. Be well. All right. All the best. Thank you. Take again. care. Bye bye.